for today's lesson is a living sacrifice. And before we get into being a sacrifice, who here enjoys buying new things? Right? Okay. The first time I bought my, my first car, I was fired up. I mean, it was the worst decision in my life, but I was excited. The first time I bought my first Xbox out of my own money, brand new 360, put it in my, under my TV, make sure it was clean, put a towel under it. I was just a little extra. I had to keep it cool and warm, even though it still broke down on me. But I was excited because I owned that Xbox. It belonged to me. I paid for it. It was mine, and no one was going to touch it. All of my nephews wanted to play. I was like, nope. You're not going to touch my Xbox 360. And to this day, they still bring it up. I'm like, shoot, you just let it go. I was a team. I was fired up. But as disciples, we got to understand that you guys were bought at a heavy price. Not just any price, the ultimate price. The greatest sacrifice of all, Jesus Christ came for you guys. And I hope that you guys are inspired to be a pleasing a living sacrifice for God. But before we get into the scriptures, I did want to give you guys some uh, history on the word atonement. I love the Old Testament. It's, I mean, the first sermon I ever preached in the North was about Deuteronomy. It's an incredible, incredible scripture. But atonement is especially important to understand. Now, atonement, in a sense, is we all want peace, we all want love, we all want justice in the world, yet it is filled with evil. Everywhere you look, there's evil. Yeah. There is evil the moment you were born. Why? Because humanity is falling. Mm -hmm. And there's just going to be evil no matter where you go. Yeah. So evil ruined everything. And specifically two ways. And what the first way is, is direct effect. Meaning when someone creates an injustice, they steal, they rob, they murder. Anything that creates an injustice is a direct effect. Yeah. The secondary effect is the people you damaged. Mm -hmm. When you grow up in a household, you, your parents are really... Uh, just very unresponsible parents. Mm -hmm. They have a direct effect on their kids, but the secondary effects is what the kids suffer. Mm -hmm. All the emotions going up, the emotional issues, and not having a dad in the picture. It, it's just evil everywhere. Mm -hmm. So everything creates a, a lack of trust in relationships when there's damage, uh, indirect damage. So please excuse my, my voice if it goes out. I was singing last night. I was singing way too hard. <laughs> I was doing over reads and singing. And I'm like, I should, shouldn't probably be singing this hard. But I was. <laughs> and, and then, so thank you, Patrick, for the water. So if evil is everywhere, then God's got to get rid of it. So God is like, okay, well, there's evil. Humanity is falling. What do I got to do to get rid of it while not taking get rid of you guys? How am I going to distinguish it without not distinguishing Patrick, without not distinguishing Natalie, without not taking out Anne. I got to figure something out. So God was like, okay, well, if I'm going to get rid of it without getting rid of you guys, I got to figure something out because I love you guys. Mm -hmm. So in the Old Testament, the animal sacrifice was implemented. Mm -hmm. So when an animal was sacrificed, it, it covered, it atoned for the sin that you created. Mm -hmm. So their blood paid for the sin you caused. So this was a very simple representation. The blood represented life. Mm -hmm. So you said, guess what? Now there's life because someone died for you. Yeah. And th hence for the, 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 the atonement of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now the priest, which is pretty interesting, once they had sacrificed a lamb, a pigeon, whatever it would be, mm -hmm. they would grab the blood and they would go sprinkle it around the camp. They would go walk around and sprinkle the blood, sprinkle the blood. Because mm -hmm. it was kind of covering from the sin of the people. But along the process, when God instituted this new process, it wasn't enough for the people. The purification process was not enough. And their hearts grew cold. Yeah. The, there was still sprinkled blood around the camp, but no one was repenting. No one was changing. People were the same. People weren't changing. So God is like, man, their heart is cold. Their wax hard. Like They're not changing. Even though I'm purifying them with the blood of the sacrifice, they're not changing. So it became meaningless. And Isaiah looked up and he said, you know what? We need a new king. That's right. We need someone to come and institute something new, something yeah. different, because the people are not responding. They're not changing. And isn't that the worst when you have a disciple that just not change? Yeah. Think about the Old Testament. They didn't have Jesus. They didn't have an intimate relationship with him. So for them, it was a lot harder to change because they didn't have the spirit. Yeah. They depended on the spirit that Moses had, that the leader had. They didn't have it themselves. Wow. And yet, 
us disciples, we have the spirit. Yeah. And when a disciple doesn't start changing, it's like, you missed it. You're so ungrateful for the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's that God gave you the easiest way to repent of the Spirit. That's right. and, and this morning, I wanted to preach. I, I have been having quiet times on grace. I mean, oh. grace is so deep. It was, it, it's not just this, the, the inclination of God's character, but it's so much more. Yeah. And I said, like, God, I want to preach about grace. But God said, nah, you got to preach about this. Oh. Oh. I'll preach about the sacrifices, Lord. Oh. Uh, I'll pre what is this? Exactly, Kyle. So, okay. So now when Jesus comes into the picture, we have the greatest sacrifice, which is Jesus himself. The living lamb. And, and he went to be in sacrifice without complaining, without no, no hesitation. He went fully because he was thinking of you. And I heard it said that it was the nails that kept Jesus on the cross, but it was his love for you. That could not keep him away from it. So now we have two new rituals, which is baptism and the Lord's Supper. Amen. Baptism. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You ain't want to hear the word of God. I mean, I'm just getting started. I'm warming up. But I know the Lord's got to preach it, man. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's go, Hannah. Give me an amen when you guys get to verse 19. Verse 19 says, do you not know? That your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You guys can take a seat. Nice. <clears throat> what an incredible passage. I mean, I love how Paul always says, you guys don't know? <laughs> With the assumption that the reader knows what he's talking about. And isn't that the worst if someone's calling you out? You're like, bro, don't you know? It's like, yeah. you did that last, you did that? Are you serious? Did you not know? But Paul understood that his audience understood, especially the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And he's like, do you not know that your body is at the temple of the Holy Spirit yeah. who is in you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so Paul, Paul was making the point that our bodies were bought. Yeah. It doesn't belong to you. So here's where we get the principle of purity. Guess what? Your body's not yours. Guess what? Keep it pure. Because the, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Yeah. If you give in to sin and you unpurify your body, guess what? You sin against God himself. So that's why we don't pollute our bodies. Yeah. Let me tell you guys a story about a brother one time. I was back in L.A. A baby Christian's kind of still. I was, uh, you know, two years in the faith. And I was living in a brother's household. And I can't remember the reason why, but her brother said, let me go sleep in your car tonight. And I was like, um, okay. It's like, sure, why not? But I said, keep in mind, I got to get up at 3.30 to get to work at 4. So I wake up at 3.30, you know, get ready, get in my car. And I was like, hey, bro, I got to go to work. So he gets up. And the moment I get in my car, whoo, baby, I had to pray on my way to work. I mean, this brother has stinky teeth. I mean, gosh. The whole way home, the whole way work, I'm just like, I'm praying God. I mean, it was an honor to serve him. And, but my car was stinky. I mean, gosh, I mean, I don't know what this brother was wearing, but she. And the car was just smelling so bad. And I was mad because that car belonged to me. I'm like, it was my car, bro. Just, come on. And, and we forget that your body is not yours. Your, car, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Jesus. Because the moment you were baptized, guess what? It belonged to him. Amen. Yeah. And, and I don't think we have the right to pollute it, to make it dirty, to, this, to, to not keep it clean before the king. Because yeah. God is going to call you for an account. Yeah. It's like, how is, how is my tabernacle looking? Right. And that just doesn't include just keeping it pure, but all kinds of care for it. Because this is, you only get one body. Why not take care of it? Yeah. And, and you guys... We're bought at a price. And this morning, I just want to remind you, remind you guys that the price was so heavy. I mean, study out the cross for your quiet times. Yeah. And you realize that how much Jesus paid. Yeah. Every time I, I, I take a meeting, I try to reflect. And I imagine myself at the feet of the cross and Jesus is bleeding. And I'm like, ah! It just gets me every time. Mm -hmm. But your body does no longer belongs to you. It is to be honored by God. And the next scripture in Romans 12, we're going to park the bus here. 
Because there's so much to study here. I mean, Kyle was preaching on Romans, and, and uh, Rafina kind of hints on sacrifices too. Amen. But the Lord just orchestrated the service this morning. So Romans 12. I hope you guys love studying the Bible. Yes. Yeah. As we all know, when you open up the Bible, the Bible opens. Yeah. Let's try that again. When you open up the Bible, the Bible opens. Yeah. So Romans 12. What was the evil? On verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, mm. holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve God's will is his good and pleasing and perfect will. As we, as we all know, we don't conform, but we what? Transform. What an incredible passage. And the whole lesson is based on these two verses. The whole part of my sermon is based on two verses. I mean, there's so much here to unpack. Yeah. Now, the ministry is entirely God's. Yeah. But, for example, God says that we become a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That your dark past does not defile you anymore. That's right. I don't care what kind of sin you were living in, it does not defile you anymore. Mm -hmm. And when the, when the Bible says your body, it's not just referring to the physical body. So what is it referring to? It's talking about your soul, your spirit, your mind, your flesh, everything, the whole thing, the whole package, yeah. one big package. So therefore, your thoughts are not your thoughts. They're God's. That's what the Bible says, make them slave to Jesus. If you have them thoughts that they're disciple thoughts, guess what? You make them a slave because they are in Jesus' thoughts. The body belongs to Jesus. Okay, well, if the body belongs to give, guess what? Then you give yourself to, to who? To God. Now, what's interesting is that the Bible says that you become a sacrifice and that your body must be ruled by you, not the body rules you. It's a sad thing to walk around the world and see people being ruled by their bodies. Man. I mean, that's all they, I mean, people that I work with, all they talk about is inappropriate things. I'm just like, dude, just stop, man. Yeah. It's like, why do you got to talk about all these things? And sometimes I feel rude because I'm like, dude, like, don't, don't talk to me about this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and people that are ruled by their body, it's a terrible master. Right. It will take you down to a pit and destroy your whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But disciples, we're not ruled by the body. We master the body. Because the true master is who? Jesus. Yeah. He masters you so you can master your body yeah. and make him a slave to us. So Paul was, the Corinthians must be in some deep sin. I mean, calling him like this in Paul, he's like, dude, I urge you. Like, guys, I'll plead with you guys. What are you doing? It's like Paul is taking the humility side. He's not being the leader. He's like, dude, I'm an apostle. You got to do this. Amen, you got no choice, bro. I'm an apostle. I'm a Paul. Don't you know who I am? But Paul is like, dude, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm begging you. I urge you in view of God's mercy. He said, think of everything that you've been forgiven of. Are you going to throw that away for a moment of pleasure to your master, the body? Are you kidding me? But he says, why not offer your body as a living sacrifice? A living sacrifice. And the first century people must have understood this. They, they got the visual. Because, I don't know, if you, I've, I've seen animals being sacrificed. Yeah. I lived in Mexico in witchcraft. Yeah. I've seen animals killed right before me. Wow. And then they sprinkle the blood on you and the animals die and then they put it all over your body. I've seen it. It's a visual example. So they understood that, you know what, you bring the animal, you put it in the altar and you sacrifice it. Whoa. It's a physical visual for them to get it. Because they weren't getting it. So he's like, dude, imagine yourself as an animal. Well, that sounds kind of harsh, but imagine yourself as a sacrifice coming before the altar and laying down before the king and being slain. And he's like, you guys are not understanding that this is your sacrifice. It's not a physical one, but it's a spiritual one. It is a spiritual one because what? What do we bring to the altar? You bring your life. 
You bring your life before the king, you put it in the altar, and you lay the king master you. And a lot of us are on the altar, but we're, we're just kind of sitting there and kind of shaking a little bit. And kind of giving Jesus a hard attitude. It's like, I don't know about that one, Jesus. It's like, I don't know if I want to do that for you. But instead of just being a living sacrifice. Now, sin, sin demanded a punishment. And the world around us was filled with evil. So guess what? We must become this. Now, this is one of my favorite passages because as a baby Christian, I was fired up with little nuggets like this, but 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Come on, bro. Educate us. 1 Corinthians. It's coming, my brother. It's coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. <clears throat> now, the Bible simply says, get rid of... Of the old yeast, wow. so that you may re be so you may be new, unleavened batch, as you really are yeah. for Christ. Mm -hmm. Our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Now, in Exodus, if you guys remember, the Israelites, the angel of death was coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was coming to take what demanded was death. Yeah. And the Israelites to do take a lamb and sprinkle the blood on top of the door, so when the angel comes, he doesn't kill you. And, and the Israelites, they were freaking out. They start slaying all these animals and putting them on the door. And the spirit of death came. Mm. And the Egyptians did not sacrifice. Uh. They could have. It doesn't say in the scriptures that they couldn't have not. Mm. Right? But they didn't. Mm. So when the angel came, he killed all the firstborn kids except the Israelites. Mm. Because they understood that the Passover lamb saved me. Mm -hmm. So when the wrath of God comes, he is your Passover lamb. Because God will not bring judgment on you. Rather, the Passover lamb will, God will pass his judgment over you. Because Jesus paid the price for you. So Jesus became your Passover lamb. And this is important to understand because as disciples, we just have to have gratitude for the cross. I mean, you know when you don't have gratitude, when you walk around complaining all the time. Ooh, baby. When you're walking around complaining, it's like, man... Why is this going to be this way? Why is it going to be that? Well, why isn't this happening? It's like, dude, you just lost gratitude for the cross. Mm. And, and Jesus will sprinkle the blood and save you. And he protects you from the wrath of God. Amen. Now, in Romans 12, verse 1, it talked about offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So you may think, okay, God, why are you interested in my body? I mean, so, I mean, a lot of you guys are young, but it's like, man, I'm old. I'm bold. I'm kind of chubby. I mean, what do you want from my body? I mean, I'm lazy here and there. I mean, what's so special about my body? Why do I got to give it to you as a, as a special sacrifice? But the Old Testament demanded a flawless sacrifice. So you will bring the, the lamb for the, the priest, and he will look at it and examine it. It's like, dude, there's something wrong with this. He's not being sacrificed. Go back and bring the best. I'm not sacrificing this animal. It's not, it's not, it's not according to the standards. And then they imagine nothing but the best sacrifices. Yeah. And for us, guess what? If there's flawless in your heart, there's something wrong, then God doesn't see you as a living sacrifice. Mm. Anything that hinders your heart, your, your spirituality, it makes you, on, on, it makes you not the living sacrifice oh, that God demands yeah. from you. Yeah. Of course, there's an exception. There's a fly brother, cow in a room. I mean, he's always looking fly, looking his best. I mean, bro, this brother's this guy's too good, man. But the Bible says that our bodies are acceptable through Christ. And what makes it so special is because God looks at the beauty of us. God looks at the beauty of how you look. God looks at the beauty of your inner beauty. God looks at how special you are as an individual, that he formed you from your mother's womb. He knew yeah, you before yes. you were born. Yeah. He knows every hair in your head. I mean, I don't know how many you got, but maybe they're falling, but you still got some, man. And God knows them all. And God says, man, I love the sacrifice. I love when Daniel Torola comes every morning to, to the temple of God. 
I love when Gio Suniga comes to his prayer spot every morning with the temple, the living sacrifice. I love when Krista comes and, and she just comes to the, to the altar and lays it all before the king. And God loves the purity of disciples. There is no purity like the disciples of Jesus. I mean, my family was the most unpure families I've ever seen. I mean, growing up, they, they idolized it. It was so gross. This, this is all I was being taught. And, and then when I came to the kingdom, and then as a little kid, I'm like, there must be something out there that's pure. Mm -hmm. And I met the sisters, I met the brothers, I met the, the shepherds, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. Yeah, right. I don't deserve this. Now, the Old Testament worshipers denied the earthly treasures. And for them, it wasn't what you all got. I mean, it wasn't your Apple Watch. Right. I mean, they didn't have your smartphones. They had sheep, they had goats, and they had bulls. And to them, to offer the sacrifice, guess what? You're sacrificing the only thing that matters in life. This is their income. This is their wealth. This is what they base their life upon. So when they sacrifice it, it's like, man, I'm putting everything before the king. What are you willing to sacrifice for Jesus? If Jesus demanded something from you, will you give it? And if there's something in your life you wouldn't give, what is it? And what's holding you back from giving it? I got a challenge for you guys. You guys ready? Yes. Yes. If Jesus was the greatest sacrifice, and a sacrifice implies you give to others what they don't deserve, then I, I want to challenge you guys to be a sacrifice for a baby brother or a sister. In a sense that if someone is sponsorship for the GOC, you say, you know what? I got you. I'll take care of you. I'll become a sacrifice so you can be with the family of God. So you don't miss out this incredible event. I want to challenge you guys to be a sacrifice in your evangelism. Yeah. It's, when is the last time you share your faith? I want to challenge you guys to actually evangelize. And be a sacrifice for God in this way. This is the simple challenge. Two challenges. Be a sacrifice for God and be a sponsor for someone. Be giving. That's what will help you with, with greed. Yeah. I mean, as a baby Christian, when I came to the kingdom, I had a lot of things. I had three cars. I mean, I was a singles professional, yet for some reason they put me on campus. But I mean, I was, I was banking. I, was, I came and I took care of the sisters. I took care of the brothers. I gave them. I moved into the household. Not that they moved in like, man, what can I get? I gave to them all. It got to the point where I would pay their entire rent because they were so broke. I took care of them. I'm like, you guys are my little brothers. And in the kingdom, we can't forget that we're family. Yes. So when we sacrifice for each other, we're not just roommates. We're not just people you see at church. We're a family. I see you guys more, more than I see my family, to be honest. So we literally are disciples. So I want to call you guys to be men and women who sacrifice to the king. You sacrifice and you become pleasing in your marriages. You make sure your marriage is outstanding for God. Yeah. I want to challenge you guys in your purity to make sure that your bodies are not polluted with sin. Anything that will hinder the spirit, that's, you just got to cut it off. Yeah. And I want to challenge you guys to be a sacrifice to the king. Yeah. And if you ever have a hard time being a living sacrifice, remember that Jesus did it for yeah. you guys. And, I mean, there's so much I could say, but, I mean, I'm running out of time here, guys. I like to keep it straight to the point. I mean, you know, I just have to go for the kill. But with that being said, I love you guys. To God be the glory. And I give you guys Dennis and Jesse for the glory.